Hello learners, I am Garima Vasti and today we are going to learn about the methods of teaching and learning. As you all know as teachers it is very important for us that how we teach and what are the effective methods of teaching and learning. So today let us first discuss some characteristics of effective methods. First, in a classroom a teacher aims to create interest in children so that they are able to actively participate and think independently. Also, while we are choosing a method in our classroom, we should take care that it matches the mental ability of our students. As you will see now that some processes are meant for smaller or younger kids, that is pre-primary or primary level, for example, playway, which we are going to learn today while others like problem solving method match the mental ability of higher level students, elementary level students. The next point as you see in the PPT is emphasis on student experience. We all know about constructivism and how it is very important that the student is able to learn whatever he or she is learning inside the classroom with his or her experience outside the classroom and hence is able to construct his or her knowledge and understanding of that concept accordingly. Next, we also take care that there is a scope for peer learning. When I'm talking about peer learning, it means that the student is able to talk or learn from other students. Teacher is not the only information giver or information is not only received from this teacher in a very traditional classroom method but rather children learn amongst themselves and also learn independently. While we are doing all of this we also create curiosity and creative thinking within the child. This includes development of life skills not other than rote memorization we also want to develop in children certain life skills which will help them in future. Project method is one such example of it. Last but not the least, while we are talking about these effective methods, we should make sure that we are flexible in these different methods. As teachers, we can always take a mixture of these methods and so we should apply these methods according to our class levels, according to our students, the concept or topics that we are teaching. Uh, also, these have to be very cost effective because the students and teachers can learn together. It is now we are going to move on to the next slide, which is about the different methods as I told you. We categorize the two methods uh, as instructional methods. Instructional methods are those methods which are teacher oriented where the teacher is a very active person in the classroom where the whereas the children are passive. So instructive methods include lecture, demonstration, inductive and deductive method and discussion. Similarly, student center methods, they are the ones where unlike the instructional method, students are the one who are very active and teacher plays a passive role. These include playway, project method, problem solving method and discovery method. Now one by one we will talk about these methods in detail. First, we learn about instructional methods. The first instructional method that we are going to talk about today is lecture method. In lecture method, as I already told you, a teacher provides information, concepts, facts, events, theories, laws and principles. This is what we usually undergo in traditional classrooms. The content is presented as a whole to the student and students are passive listeners who learn through listening and memorization. 
the only time that the student is actually going to talk is when you as a teacher ask them questions and hence this is that is the reason why I said that lecture method is where the student is not as active while the teacher is. Also one disadvantage of lecture method is that students are not able to somehow uh, the teachers have a different pace. The teacher will go on teaching with his or her pace and the students in a class are of different levels. So it is very difficult to assess or understand whether the student is getting all the information or concepts that we are trying to teach him or her. The next method is demonstration method. Demonstration method is where you again are as a teacher very active but you are demonstrating through pictures, charts, models, experiments, either of them, two of them, any combination and you explain the children about the principles and concepts involved within the topic that you are teaching. Now demonstration method as you can see has four step. The first step in demonstration method is planning. This happens with, with uh, not inside but outside the classroom where the teacher is planning. So as a teacher you plan what will attract the mental ability of my students, what will involve my students more in this class and you choose the experiment, the material that is required for your students if you are going to conduct an experiment especially in science then you do the experiment beforehand so that when you go to the class you are able to do it in an effective manner. Next you also prepare some questions which you can ask while you are doing this experiment or after the experiment so that the children is a the child or children are able to develop their curiosity even more. The next step of this process as you can see is introduction. We introduce the topic inside the classroom. When we introduce the topic we ask students some questions about the topic, what is it that they already know about the topic. You introduce them and then again you make sure that the children are curious about what you are about to do, what you are about to demonstrate or the activity you are about to do so that when the next level comes, which is demonstration itself, the children are interested, they are curious, they are sitting on their toes and they want to learn what this experiment is all about. In demonstration, as a teacher, you lead the experiment. But it is always suggested that you can take some help from your students, which will always contribute towards their learning. During this demonstration, you can involve two methods. For example, sometimes teachers while doing experiment also want to show some charts to their students. Or you can involve a working model with a chart. The next thing in this process and the last is blackboard usage. It is very important how we use the blackboard in demonstration method because it is here that we are concluding this entire lengthy process. The teacher along with students writes down the objective of the entire lesson that was being taught to the children. They write down the important concepts and theories that were involved during this demonstration. The children can also come on the blackboard and note down any of the findings that come out of the experiment. Lastly, uh, students also take notes, draw diagrams, etc. Hence, in demonstration method, the child is not just sitting as a passive listener, they are seeing different things and also learning different skills like observation, note taking and group work which is there in demonstration method. The next method is you can see and the last one in instructional methods is inductive and deductive method. This is generally used 
for the teachings of science and mathematics. In inductive method, we go from particular events to generalized conclusions. That is, um, if I take an example in a class, if you are to teach children about properties of an isosceles triangle, then you simply tell children that if two sides of a particular triangle are equal, then their opposite angles are also equal. So as a teacher, you can give them different measurements, like you give them three triangles and you tell them that the sides are, say, 6 cm, 8 cm and 12 cm respectively of those three triangles. You can ask the children then to draw the triangles and measure the opposite angle. As the children will do that, this through construction and note down their observations, you will and the children will realize that the property that they have concluded is that indeed in an isosceles triangle, opposite if the sides are equal, then opposite angles are also equal. Next, that in inductive method, children discover new concepts and relation. Through this example, you can see that this concept was developed and formed by the students, by their noting. Opposite to this is deductive method, where Rather than from particular to general, we move from general to particular. In this case, is if I am a teacher who will use a deductive method with the same example, what I will do it if I had to teach children the same properties of an isosceles triangle, I would ask children, I would simply tell children, state the truth that in a given triangle, if two sides are equal, then their opposite angles are also equal. And then I will give them a question which will say that in a isosceles triangle, say angle ABC is 70 degree. Find out the other true angles. The child will apply the property of an isosceles triangle and it is after that that they will come to the conclusion or they'll find out the answers of what the other two angles measure. So deductive method, as you can see, is generally used to verify the truth of already discovered concepts and relations. Next, now we move on to student-centered methods. Student-centered methods are very important. And if you can see closely at this picture, it shows one of those student-centered methods which we are going to talk about first, which is Montessori method. If you can see, the child has different blocks. They are of different color and different shapes and sizes. Here, the child has cylindrical blocks and she is putting them in ascending order where the most bottommost is the one which has the which is thick, which is longer, then as the tower proceeds, it goes thinner and thinner. This is the concept formation of size for the student in a playway method, which is Montessori. So we come to playway method. In playway method, Montessori is just an example. Another example is kindergarten method. But what characterizes a playway method is that one, children participate and organize game effectively. They are the ones who will either come and participate in the game, which you as a teacher initiate, or they themselves sometime can organize a game if you give them some objects or otherwise independently. Next is creating new games. If you have ever observed as a teacher that children create new games, small children will play games of role playing where they are either teachers teaching other students, other children, their peers, or they are playing doctor doctor where one is playing the role of a doctor and another of a patient. As and when they go along and they include people, they also 
have some rules for playing this particular game like you will come turn by turn or uh, turn by turn everyone gets to become a teacher if you're a good teacher and similarly children also imbibe self-created discipline inside them one more example of this is hide and seek when children play hide and seek in a park together you could have seen and one child goes and gives a den the children decide what is the number like the child has to count till 10 if the child counts till only 5 all of the other children go and tell that the rule is that you have to talk you have to say out aloud till 10 so that is how children get an idea of how rules are important they themselves create discipline next is learning learning here in playway method is very natural it is joyful it is engaging because it is easy to teach children while playing because that is what children do for children play comes very naturally and if you as a teacher want them to sit in the class especially pre-primary and primary that is going to be difficult so learning in this natural joyful energizing environment is very easy for children and it is very easy for a teacher to transact all of these things the scope that playway method gives to fulfill the child's physical emotional and cognitive needs is also very high the child uh, is able to transact all of their emotions inside play role play for example they behave as adults children will want to act as teachers because they are very small and they are not teachers but they want to become adults they want to be teachers and so it is their emotional their social and emotional needs which make them role play or play act situations that are very familiar to them similarly uh, as you can see or if you have observed and worked with small children then they are full of energy and it is double than what adult energy is so play also creates an outlet for their physical energy next is that playway method creates a very healthy student and teacher environment you as a teacher are not instructing the child making them do something that is very unnatural but rather something which comes very naturally to them and you are helping them learn in that manner similarly like you will develop a healthy student teacher relationship you will also develop a healthy student to student relationship because children work in groups children play in groups and while playing in groups they have conflicts they resolve conflicts who is it that is going to take the turn now they have different abilities which form like turn taking ability is one of them children themselves regulate themselves in self discipline so as they are able to take turns creative skills are developed as children are the one who slowly and steadily change the game according to their needs if there is any problem inside the game they solve it on their own there are leadership skills where the child one child somewhere decides that this is all that we as a group are going to do then another child is going to talk about it and hence important is communication skills are also developed in children where they are able to express themselves to each other and say this is what we want this is how we want to play this is how we want to learn or do a particular activity it leads to hence rational thinking and cooperative learning next we are going to learn about the principles of playway method as i already told you that play is a natural instinct for a child it is an expression of their needs through these expressions it helps them develop physically cognitively social and emotional growth is very important for them at this time if you provide them all of these opportunities 
which are there in playway, they will develop. And in case of an absence, sometimes the development is very slow or stunted. And in extreme cases of neglect, abuse, for example, corporal punishment, which is now not allowed, um, the children will not develop in a particular area at all. Mm, so going forward and discussing the principles of playway method, the first principle we are going to talk about is principle of unfolding innate potentials. When we talk about student-centered methods or student-friendly methods, we say that child has in himself or herself innate potentials, which as a teacher, we need to observe, we need to identify, we need to bring it out, we need to develop it. So, and accordingly, you create activities, you create a learning environment, you give them opportunities which would unfold their potential. The next is principle of natural instincts. Principle of natural instincts, we have been talking about it, is that for children, play is very natural. And so when you teach children through play, learning from, for them becomes very natural. And in this process, we learn and the child is able to internalize the concepts, the lessons that you are trying to teach him or her. Next, the third is principle of complete freedom. This is a very important principle and it is a cardinal principle for playway, which is that the child is completely free to play, to learn as and when he or she wishes in whatever manner. So you give the child freedom to explore different resources, different objects, different materials, and the child, according to his or her need, fulfills it and develops in that particular domain. The next is principle of activity, which is that the child always needs activity to engage themselves. If you have ever seen, if you have ever observed a child or children playing together, you would see that after some point of time, they get really bored with a particular activity, with a particular game, and they need some change. They will either change the game altogether or they will bring out some twist, they will do something different in it, so if I take again the example of hide and seek, then if the child is counting from 1 to 10 and is searching for his playmates and is unable to see them or is unable to find them because the area is too big, they decide that, okay, maybe we should say that the area is half the playground. And then they can also innovate that in this time, if you are not able to find us and if we catch you and you are still not able to find us, then you are going to give your den again. It's your turn again. So these kind of activities are what principle of activity talks about. The next is principle of fulfillment of desires, which as I have already told you, is that children have a lot of desires which can get fulfilled inside play. So their play acting situations of adults Im imitating them, doing play acting situations which is not really their first hand, but they want to do it in play. And it also helps them because while they are doing, while they're play acting situations, they are conflict, uh, there are situations where they resolve conflicts. And so when they face these situations in the real life, they are able to tackle it better. So their desires, their needs uh, are fulfilled through playway method. Then is principle of pleasure. I think this also holds true for adults that any person or any individual student or child will do what is pleasurable to him or her, which we enjoy, even we as adults engage in activities 
which we like to do right we don't like things which are imposed on us which are imposed from outside somebody is standing with a stick and telling us do this do that and especially not with children the principle of pleasure tells us that uh, children do what they like and because play for them is a spontaneous activity it is a sustained activity they will continue doing it and they will continue learning through this method next is principle of creativity where children can do different things explore different things in a creative manner which is that different objects as i was showing you in the earlier slide the objects were in ascending order they could be in descending order they could be vertical they could be horizontal so how a child is going to manipulate those objects is on their creativity and last but not the least is principle of responsibility which is very important because sometimes when we think of play or we think of play way method we think it's all about play it's nothing to do with you know discipline how will the child learn to sit in the class how will the child learn to actually be self disciplined but when you are teaching them through play way method they are actually responsible they themselves their inner desires motivate them to have a sense of responsibility it creates a sense of responsibility for them and so all of these principles are what lead us to play way method our next method is project method when we talk about project method uh you all must have undertaken project at some point of time in your schooling life yourself or you must have given it to your students so what is project method project method is where you as a teacher is trying to let the child go into the depth of a particular topic a particular subject a particular concept so in project method these are the steps that we as teacher follow so that it is effective first one is problem problem is of in the beginning of any project you take up a problem what is it that needs to be solved what is it that needs to be done right so in this we talk about problems which you as a teacher can give your students that see this is the problem and how do you think we can do something about it or this is the problem that you see maybe the children talk about it and how it is to be solved the next step once you have identified the problem is objective you understand and you make it clear that why are we undertaking this project right so this after that next is activity in a project method we have activity which is we give children learning environment with self planning and a lot of group activities which children do while undertaking a project they have a real life activity which is there for effective learning in project method they have liberty to perform activities freely because here children are the one who are undertaking this project and not the teacher uh in project method you can easily relate it with your outside classroom knowledge your learn knowledge is going to be useful and students realize that they can link what they are learning inside the classroom is also important outside the classroom you are connecting the two worlds and you are also integrating different subjects last is that children learn democratic values which generally project is done in a group so they learn group work they learn cooperation they learn respecting each other valuing each other's opinion and they assume and share responsibility so as i've already told you these are the steps of conducting a project you first provide a situation you then select a problem 
You plan the project with the students. Sometimes the students do it themselves if they are in higher classes. Then they go execute a particular project and lastly, you as a teacher evaluate them on it. Last is problem solving method. Problem solving method has two models. One is ideal model and another is recall solution model. An ideal model we first identify the problem and sometimes the teacher does this, sometimes the students do this. Then we define the problem together. What is it that we are facing? Generally, if you see, we know what the problem is, we know what the solution is, but we don't know how to reach that solution or what is, we know what we want to do, but we don't know how. So you define the problem, what is it that we are facing? We explore different solutions or we can call it exploring alternative solutions. The teacher discusses this with the student. They act on strategies, what they have identified the solutions. They see what we can do on this and they act on strategies. They work and they see if the problems are solved or not. If a particular problem that they were working on has now been resolved. The last is looking back where the teacher will look back. The students will look back and see if it has worked. So it is a reflective exercise. The next one is recall solution method or sorry model which is again very similar to the ideal model. It's a three step process where you first represent a problem, you then search solutions of the problem and then lastly you implement solutions with the students. Then we talk about discovery method. Discovery method, the child is the one who is the discoverer or the innovator. As a child or as a teacher, again, uh, both of you are involved in the process. Here, the child will not identify the problem. The first process is yours. You will identify the problem and you will give it to students so that they are able to come up with solutions, not solutions really, but discover what is there that needs, uh, that uh, is going to be discovered, that is innovation. So if I take the example of rainwater harvesting, you can ask them that how do we harvest rainwater? That is problem that uh, water depletion, water table is depleting. The children will observe, they will talk, they will experiment and they can come up with the idea of rainwater harvesting. Then you can build a model, you can build a tank where you can do this, that is problem solving. And last is evaluation. This was very straightforward. Sometimes what happens is that during discovery method, we figure out, we come to know that the problem is not really solved or we have not actually discovered something. We have not found a solution. So we evaluate and then if it doesn't happen, we continue the process again. So, uh, sorry, uh, this was discovery method and that is it. These were the methods of teaching and learning that we learned today. And thank you. We will see you in our next lecture.